Hi, I'm Dana. Welcome to Tools and Tips to Owning Your Worth. Uh, today's topic is some tools to helping people become more positive from your subconscious. So like, how can you live from a platform of positivity? And I'm not talking like rainbows and sunshine all the time. Okay, I am talking about legitimately looking at life from a positive lens so that you uh, raise your vibration, your mental health, physical health, emotional health, and psychological health vibrate higher, and you, you can just um, help yourself a lot more. So before I get into that, I'd like to thank my subscribers. Thank you so much. I just love each and every one of you and that you spend time with me for six to eight minutes, um, probably once or twice a week. I think it's fabulous and thank you, thank you, thank you. If you're new to the channel, welcome. I hope that what I talk about today resonates. If it does, please like the episode uh, and, and if it really resonates, please subscribe. And most important to all of you, please share. If you think that somebody could uh, benefit from hearing what I'm talking about today, please share and keep the comments rolling. I love it. I've gotten all sorts of ideas for new shows, new episodes. It's fantastic. So please, please, please keep that online community growing, growing, growing. How do I take my negative, pessimistic point of view and flip it so that I am an optimist, a glass half full, or pitch the glass and just always know that I have abundance in every opportunity that life is giving me. That's what we're going to talk about today. Tool number one, study your family of origin. <laughs> Look at any living relatives and listen, actually listen to how they approach the weather, their jobs, fellow family members, and just the day-to-day -day things that happen during life. If you turn your fellow um, family members into your classroom, you will start to see who resonates with a more positive outlook and who resonates with a more um, pessimistic outlook. Once you've established that, then it's time to do tool number two, which is a little bit difficult, but I know all of you can do it. I have all the faith in the world in you, which is self-reflection. Self-reflection. Maybe it takes a pen and paper. Maybe it just takes some quiet time in the car or sitting in a room with nobody bothering you. But have an open and honest conversation with yourself. How do I approach my job? Am I happy there? Do I, am I able to find some positive things even on a day where bad things happen? How do I approach family members? How do I approach my budget? Um, just take it nice and slow, nice and easy, one thing at a time. But again, the key is being present. Stay in your body, subset to tool number two. <laughs> you have to stay in your body in order to do this work. And if you start to recognize, yeah, you know what, I do tend to bitch about the weather. Or I tend to crab about work and I don't really ever spend time trying to find anything positive. That's okay. This is not a place to self-judge and self-shame. That's not what this is about. This is about raising our vibration. So then we are on to tool number three. Pick one area and one area only because it'll bleed into the others anyway. So pick the one that's probably the most pessimistic for you and stay present and give yourself little tasks. Like let's use the weather because where I live, um, I'm in the northern part of the Midwest and it's crazy. Like. Yesterday, two days ago was April 26th and there was snow, <laughs> right? So it's very easy after five months of snow and gray and cold to, to let that chip away at your hope and your happiness. But if you wake up every morning and you can find one positive thing about the weather, you truly, truly are setting yourself up for a better day. So tool number three is do some practical homework. 
Pay, make a conscious choice to choose something happy. For instance, today it is only like 47 out, but there's moments of sunshine. Oh, the sun. And the sun can make everybody happier. But we don't need it to be 80 degrees and sunny every single day. But when we choose, when we elect to be grateful and stay in what is good, rather than mired in all the things that we have no control over, that we cannot change, that we deem as bad, it raises our vibration. So if you start with the weather or something super mundane like that, I think that once you kind of get yourself going, I would encourage all of you, all of you, all of you to take it to the next step, which is work. Or if you're a stay at home parent, that's your job. <laughs> so please, when I tell you, don't be like, oh, I don't have a job. Yes, you do. Stay at home parents have the hardest job out there. Trust me when I tell you. Um, and really start to view certain parts of your day with gratitude. It's not going to come easy. I promise you it's not going to come easy, but it can be done. Again, if we stay in our bodies and we're just looking around us, truly looking around us and seeing what's there to be grateful for, it can help us to put that positive spin to, to, and then after that, you go to those big life circumstances, right? Like something tremendous happened. I just dropped an episode a couple weeks ago now where literally the sky opened up and the biggest lightning bolt on the planet just shot me for like, it's finally ending, which is like five weeks later. Um, but I did not, compl I can't, I just will not allow myself to become a pessimist because you can physically feel your body drag down when you give in to that pessimistic line of thinking. So if you want to check yourself after you've done this pos positive look outlook on life thing for a good probably month, try to let yourself go into that vein, you know, that old vein of pes pessimist and um, pessimistic thought. You will physically feel how different it is. It, it happens here and, and here. You actually become heavier. There's like feelings of like depression that show up. Um, energetically, it is a massive shift. So I am not saying I have um, two girls. I think I might have mentioned that before. And one of them was in the throes of um, a seventh grade adolescent drama. <laughs> And she was in the car with me and she was facing the pass out the passenger window and she said, sobbing, you know, Ma, why can't it all just be rainbows and butterflies all the time? So that is not what I am asking you to do. There's hope is dope and then there's hope for the hopeful. I am not saying fake it, fake it, fake it, you know, because that's, 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 you're going to feel that in your body too. What I'm saying is if you choose to live your life from a lens of optimism, then life doesn't happen to you. You embrace it. You're the master of your own destiny. You begin to see that in all things, there is beauty. Even if the top of it is like, you know, a gift wrapped in sandpaper, you can start to see the beauty underneath. And that comes from making an effort to pitch the pessimism, pitch the ne negative outlook, pitch the bitching. Stop bitching. There's too much wonderful things going, there's too many wonderful things going on in life. So my, that's my tool. Wrap it up. The, um, I went through all of them. So basically I'm going to end it with just a little request and a little shout out and a little challenge. Please, please, please post in the comments if you take this challenge on to um, stop itching and start looking at life through a lens of optimism and gratitude and hey, I'm here, right? And I'm living my soul contract. So I'm going to embrace it and I'm going to make this journey the happiest it can be. So until next time. Namaste.